So one thing I don't think anyone has quite done yet is give us a full breakdown of what it would cost if you wanted to walk out of a store with this bike. The SLC3 has just been released this week and I'm gonna tell you exactly how much this build costs. Welcome back to The What Life, guys. Let's roll. So for a lot of people, I think it's really interesting because we're obviously told the frame price because it's online on the internet. But the thing is, you can't ride just a frame. You need everything else to go with it to build up a bike. In the UK, I think there are, or at least there is one distributor where you can buy a fully built bike. But at the moment, that's not always gonna be possible. So ultimately, what does it cost to build this bike or put a bike that's like this together? I'm gonna to take us through the whole thing. I'm gonna caveat this by saying that I will list out below all the products that were provided to me by free or for, for free. And I also I will point out that I am running the Lun Hyper 2s on this particular build, but we're gonna cost it up for the Lun Hyper 3s, which were the wheel set that was sent by uh, Windspace for me to build up this particular bike. So let's not mess around too long, but I do think it is quite interesting because if I want to compare this bike to my buddy's Tarmac SL8 Pro that's got the same group set on it, his bike costs £8,000 and you can go into a store or go online and then that gets delivered. So what does this cost? And then we can probably try and factor that in in a few weeks when we get to compare the two bikes. Right, so let's get into it. This is the SLC 3 frame comes in various colors, which slightly changes the price. But bottom line, you're looking at about $1,980. And it's at this point, I will say, I'm gonna list all the prices up on the screen. Some are in dollars, some are in pounds, and some are in euros. And I'll try and figure it out in the wash, and we'll try and get there. $1,980 for the frame. Also got the Windspace Zero uh, handlebars, which are $290. And then if we were to call these the Lun Hyper 3.0s, they come in at $1,599. And these are all the prices that are listed on the website as of the time I'm making the video, because I know that sometimes they do change a little bit. This is a full SRAM Force group set. And I bought this online. I got it OEM from, I think it's Jay's Cycles. Really nice dude, really helpful. But OEM means it's like not the consumer version. It's the version that's provided to bike shops that they then can kind of like sell or put on bikes. So when it was delivered to me, it was all brown paper bags. There was no instructions, <laughs> no boxes. It, and also it kind of impacted the cost of the build a tiny, tiny bit but it does mean I'm running a Shimano group set that includes chain ring, cranks, uh, chain, rear cassette, front and rear derailleur, and the brake pads that came in at 1,800 pounds. The one thing it did not come with were the bolts to attach the brake calipers. Brake calipers were, were included in that 1,800. So weirdly, you can buy like titanium brake uh, bolts which are like 25 quid. But if you just want a cheap set, I think they're about seven or eight pounds. Again, I'll try and keep a running tally up on the screen, but that did change it slightly. The other thing, which was a small thing that I had to buy were the lock rings for the disc brakes to go onto the wheel. It, I, I don't know, like seven quid each. I got Shimano lock rings, that, but that is something that you are definitely going to need. Okay, so that's the group set. The one thing that I got for this build, that I think I wanted it to be quality, was the bottom bracket. And this is a cycling ceramic bottom bracket, BB86 for a SRAM dub. The SL3 obviously being a BB86 bottom bracket shell. But I wanted to get a nice ceramic bottom bracket because I thought that was gonna make a difference to the ride quality and the durability of, of the bottom bracket. And thus far, the bottom bracket and, and the ride Enjoyment has been like top tier. I, it has been really good. But that bottom bracket, the cycling ceramic bottom bracket was 195 euros, which I'm gonna kind of roughly translate to about 166 pounds. So the other thing that's worth considering is we have the saddle, which is a pro logo Nargo R4, and it's carbon railed. It's lovely, it's 147, 
millimeters, that's the one, 147 millimeters, but that comes in at 209 pounds at retail. And we have the Challenge Criterium tires, 65 pounds each, front and rear, obviously. And then we'll just throw in the sealant for free, only joking, no sealant's 20 quid. Because you obviously have to buy a big chug because you're gonna need it again and again and again. So you definitely have to factor that in. Even if you're buying a bike anyway, you should, and you're going tubeless, you're gonna have to buy sealant, but we're gonna factor that cost into this because I couldn't run it tubeless without buying sealant. So I only think that's, that's fair enough. <clears throat> uh, bar tape is probably one of the last things worth mentioning. This is actually quite bougie bar tape. It's burr bar tape, bougie burr bar tape. And obviously you can see my calipers, the, the clamps showing, which a few guys have told me off for, but I'm not changing it because anyway, but I think that runs at about 38, 40 pounds, which is not cheap. Uh, when I originally built the bike with the wheel top, I was running a different set of bars with the stem that was a little bit too long, and then I had to swap that out. So I think we pretty much covered everything. Obviously, bike computer is model's own, and we're not going to include that in the build. So we should have a good list of everything that we've had to buy to get this kind of component ready. But it's also worth pointing out that if you want a bike built, so let's say you order all these components and you take it to a bike shop, they're still going to charge you a bunch of money to, to build it up. And in the UK, when I did a ring around, it was about 350 pounds or yeah, 300 to 350. I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone that would kind of do it for less. You could do it for yourself, obviously. And that's like the whole point. You know, I did it myself. You, there's videos on me doing it myself. But you're going to need a bunch of things, um, things like torque wrenches. You're going to need a fastening bolt for the uh, disc rotors to, to fasten them on, the, fasten the clamps on. You're going to need wire cutters for the cable brake hoses. You are welcome. And you're going to need like tons of silly things that just kind of tons of like bolts and you know, anything, torque wrenches. So uh, and obviously this is a press fit bottom bracket, which I did myself. So that money kind of comes out in the wash because you also need to buy a whole bunch of grease for everything, basically, you know, carbon paste. So that 300 quid or 350 quid, is it good value? I mean, you're still paying 350 quid, but ultimately, if you try and do everything yourself just for a single build, I imagine it would probably cost maybe around that to get all the tools to put a full bike together. So unless you are someone that plans on building a bike, you know, or maybe pulling components around, it's up to you, basically, is what I'm saying. But if we factor that in, the full cost of this build, based on my calculations that are in my head, roughly, and I will obviously, the, the correct full build cost will be on screen, but I think it's about 5,275 pounds with the bar tape, or 5,250 without the bar tape, 25 quid for bar tape, well, whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll point that out. Then you've got the 350 quid build cost so you're looking at about 5,800 pounds all in for effectively this build, which is SRAM Force, which for those of you that, that do and don't know, SRAM Red, SRAM, SRAM Force, and then SRAM Rival kind of sits in that kind of Ultegra space uh, comparative, comparatively, like the in the middle. So, oof, look pedals. That was included. I have included that mentally. I just haven't told you how much they cost. 75 quid around that. So yeah, so 5,250 odd quid for this bike. And then, like I said, the SL8, the Tarmac Pro was, was 8,000 pounds with the full SRAM Force group set. And that's why I thought this video would be quite interesting because now we've got a starting off point. Now we've got a point where we can be like, okay, you pay that for that and you pay that for that. And yes, happy to have chats about customer service, happy to have chats about you know, uh, being, you know, being able to talk about something, return something. That is all very important because I've been out on this bike a whole bunch of times and almost every time I've ridden it, because I built it myself, I've had to like tighten something up or adjust something, you know? So there is that, you know, I had to kind of, t it took me a while to sort out the spaces on the bottom bracket, which is quite important. And if you were to go to a bike shop and you pay them 
300, 350 quid, they would do that for you. So by the time that you get the bike, it should be a fully functioning running bike. And all you have to do is just tighten a few screws after a week or so of riding it because things tend to, to loosen a little bit. But it took me a while. So, you know, it does kind of add up and it can kind of cost, you know, the cost of going to a bike shop can in some ways pay for itself more so than just the actual <laughs> act of doing it. But there you go, guys. The full breakdown on what I think this bike costs to build. If I've missed anything out, I'll mention it down below in the, in the description. I'll list everything that came, that, I, that was provided to me for free in the description. I'm not here to like try and, you know, I don't run a bike shop. Uh, I, I do like creating content. Uh, I love creating content. The other thing is don't forget to, you can actually go onto Strava, print out your QR code and you can put that on your bike. So if you go for a group ride and everyone's like, oh, how do we link up? You, you've got a Strava QR code <laughs> ready to go on your bike. You don't need to do that. And you don't need to put monograms on your wheels either. But hopefully there you go. That's the full breakdown of what it costs. If you were to walk into a bike shop and say, hey, I want a SRAM Force on a Windspace SLC in the UK. And obviously that's exclusive of, of like, I don't know what import tax is. I th I'm thinking that it might not necessarily be 100% applicable because of the way that the product is shipped and, and where you actually end up buying it from. Don't quote me on that hypothetically. What do I have to say from a lawyer perspective? In theory, supposedly, th the shipping, anyway. But there might be some shipping on cost of that on top of that because that's not something that I've had to uh, worry about in terms of the entire, the entire build, just being completely honest with you guys. But I think it looks great. I'm incredibly happy with it in terms of like how it looks. I think the fact that it looks like a proper bike build, um, it's not trying to be like an, an aero bike with a really f kind of big, deep header tube. It's just trying to be a nice, light, enjoyable bike. And it ticks those boxes. And I'll give you a review on how I feel it rides another time. But I wanted to give you the lowdown because it's not always clear when we start talking about the cost of a frame you know, what does it actually cost to make that frame into a bike? And that's what we were trying to point out this evening is that, yeah, there you go. About five and a half grand for a full SRAM Force Windspace SLC3. Guys, thanks for joining in. If you find the content useful or interesting or anything like that, subscribe. <laughs>